Hello there. I'd like to introduce myself, but unfortunately, my name is too complicated to pronounce in any of your thousands of languages. So, you can call me Kurt. I was sent on a mission to write a blog about my favourite planet in the universe. Around a tiny yellow hot ball of gas, there's an even smaller blue rock floating around that you call Earth. My bosses wanted me to try to define the characteristics of Earth's human inhabitants. That's you, by the way. And I'm absolutely puzzled. How could I define the human race? Because with over 6 billion humans on the planet, it was really hard to try to understand why you are all so different. Here, I'll show you what I mean. For instance, this is Yuri. He's a teacher in Bolivia. And that is how he defines himself. This is Makimba. She is a teacher in Mozambique. And that is how she defines herself. Are they both the same? Well, no, not really. Yuri is a Roman Catholic, and Makimba is Muslim. That's not all. Yuri has lighter coloured skin than Makimba, and Yuri is a man, but Makimba is a woman. Makimba considers herself to be quite wealthy, but Yuri has very modest means. So, if you think about it, even though they both define themselves as being teachers on your planet, they don't appear to be very similar at all. Now, can you see why I was finding this project so difficult? Wow! Look at all your differences! Your religions to begin with. Apparently you have 21 major ones. And it seems that if you're Jewish, you can't be a Hindu. If you're a Hindu, you can't be a Christian. If you're a Christian, you can't be a Sikh. If you're a Sikh, you can't be a Buddhist. If you're a Buddhist, you can't be a Muslim. And if you're a Muslim, you can't be Jewish. Let's look further. I accessed your primitive internet to try and get a better understanding of what makes a human a human. I typed in the words human similarities and quickly got 36 million results. A great start, I thought. But then, when I looked further, I found that most of these pages referred to human similarities to chimpanzees. <laughs> so then, I typed the words human differences and I got over 265 million results. Then, look at your beautiful planet. From where I'm sitting, it looks like this. But, you see it as this. You have lots of lines that I can't see, that divide your world up into funny shapes. I think they call them countries. But, what is the difference if this person lives here, or this person lives there? I've learnt a lot about your history, and I understand that from thousands of years ago, up to quite recently, humans felt the need to organise themselves into tribes. But that's crazy now in your modern age. Thousands of years ago, you didn't know that your world was quite so big. And so, you felt the need to defend where you lived. But now, you all know exactly how big the world is, and how much space you have to go around. So, I hope you all understand why I've been finding this project all so difficult. Since your time began, there has not been a day without conflict somewhere on your planet. Whether it's been between your countries, your gangs, or just between two people, it's simply not working for you. Even on my planet, we all have our differences. And like you, it makes us feel very unique. However, we also never forget that we are all part of the same civilization living on the same planet. You should find a way of understanding that your differences have separated you all. Maybe it's time to concentrate and learn more from the things that you have in common. After all, surely you can see that you all live on the same home, your planet Earth. As human beings, you are all unique with your personal beliefs, and this is the most important similarity that you all share. You are all human first. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk of mine. I certainly have. In fact, I think I'm going to stick around for a while. So long, peeps! <laughs>